Okay, we're back, we're on a roll with these things. It'd be nice to have a finished playthrough of a whole game on this channel, and if I just do like two or three more of these things, I can finish Pikmin and that'll be just a done thing people can look at start to finish if they want to. I think that'd be a nice thing to have. The idea was I'd be constantly doing that, but you know how I am, unfortunately. I'm bad at keeping myself up and doing things, but... We've almost finished Pikmin, which is very nice, where, as I was saying last time, finishing up the gloomy cave area, and then we go somewhere more fun after this. I don't remember exactly what's needed, so we'll take a third of each. I've been doing some stuff tonight, playing some things. I could talk about that if there's downtime here, it's kind of relevant to Pikmin. The game I was just playing was Call of Duty 2, as in the very second one, and... Do you immediately get me if I say that Call of Duty 2 is... If I say that Call of Duty 2 is like Pikmin in certain ways, I'll get into that in a second, but what you may have just noticed me trying there is someone who was watching these told me that I'm throwing the Pikmin slow because in this version of the game, if not all of them, the trick is that you C stick the Pikmin into Olimar so they're standing next to him when he reaches for them, and that's something I find quite cool, is that actually how quickly they're grabbed and thrown is determined by their proximity to Olimar. So yeah, he's more ready to toss them if they're just like right on top of him. And, uh... These guys have come back because we've been here for a few days, they've had time to recover as a population, and what that just means is that I am going to quickly clear them out and try not to lose anything important. We only need to get at a little area of this place, so watch how quick I can throw. It doesn't really matter, we don't have to kill all of them or be super careful about this, we just want it to be safe for the non-red ones. If I forget to clear these things and then send non-reds carrying stuff past them, they're all going to get lit on fire and wiped out, it'll be quite bad. So we just quickly take care of that and then grab them all and we're ready to go. We can send some back with the bodies if we don't need them, but for the minute we have to actually deal with this. There's one more that I forgot about. Come on team, cooperate with me. Don't grab the bodies. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Wait there, and I really hope they won't get lit on fire. They should be fine. Maybe they won't. Okay, I'm gonna risk it. I'll leave them there. They'll be fine. <laughs> okay, I'm actually playing a game on this channel, I'm not immediately talking. Isn't that fun? Some not quite generic, but getting their commentary, perhaps, from me. Oh, I almost drowned that one. <laughs> Have I talked about that before, how most stuff on YouTube gaming content is just genuinely bewildering to me? Like, I genuinely have no idea why the fuck they're here. <laughs> you probably get it on the side of here, I do. Do you get, like, most gaming-based recommendations? Like what YouTube has done to music in the name of some kind of, like, gesture towards democracy, there's, like, lots of music with zero views by weird new producer artists with nothing really going on, it's just basically idiots with nothing to say trying to game the algorithm for their crap music. Yeah, you've probably noticed that happening in music, but what else is happening is that happens in video games and I often get suggested like if I watch something to do with games I'll get a suggestion that I look at some guy's stream where it's just him playing the Call of Duty campaign of like Modern Warfare 3 to, you know, the new one, and it's just some clown occasionally saying, like, one thing, like, the opposite of me, just doing that for hours on end, and then it just goes up and is saved on YouTube, and there it is for posterity, six hours of some, like, warehouse forklift driving slave playing Call of Duty, and we get to appreciate all that it is to him, and he's just kind of moseying through it, not doing anything, just shooting, dying, and going, oh crap, didn't see that guy, I'm dead. Like, that's the most animated these guys will get, it's surreal to me, and yeah, that's just the experience of these things to most people. And, uh, yeah, it's just 
bizarre. Why would anyone want to watch that? I have absolutely no idea. It's very wrong to me. Uh, I believe I need reds here. Let me quickly grab them and put the rest to work. Yes, that's right. Reds go face the wall while the other ones go do stuff. Reds, we have a thing to grab. Run through the fire, no fear. Oh, crap, I forgot about that. It's a, kind of a trick here. You need reds and blues. So I have to go grab the blues off this bridge and run them across the fire without getting them all killed. Not too difficult, though. No, guys, you're meant to come with me. I need the yellows working the bridge. Not the time is a massive concern here. I think I actually need reds to carry all of these back. But anyway... Yeah, just as I was saying, I find it very strange. It's good that these people are on YouTube. Just for someone like me, I can basically watch and confirm that... Yes, this is what goes through the mind of the average person when faced with a video game or... Basically anything. I do that a fair bit. I just watch... Junk to... Basically watch people watching people. That's what art is to me, or just like media in general. It's cool to see what different people make of things. Mostly nothing particularly good. It's like... It's like watching Vox Pops, which is something that Frank Zappa did, his way of studying people. He would just watch idiots be interviewed on the news and by MTV and stuff. Or if you know, it's an image I like throwing around, that one of, uh... That one of Ozymandias in Watchmen, watching all of the TVs that have just junk at once, and he's saying to himself, just me in the world. Well, yeah, that's me when I'm watching, like, some idiot fly over American and play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I'm just watching people, watching other people. I'm watching what they make of the efforts of the Call of Duty team. I'm pretty sure I still needed blues over there, yep. I just created a bunch of extra work for myself. Sent them back too early. We'll still make it on time, though. It's no great fuss. These two things in a whole day, that's easy. I'm pretty sure. We might cut it a bit close. I'd better pay a bit of attention and keep hustling. I don't have all of the quickest routes unlocked, but enough. Oh no, the bugs are back too. I hope they don't kill all of my carriers. They might. All right, where did I leave the blues? They're down there. Great work, Anthony. You're a genius. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, Call of Duty, the old ones interest me for a few reasons, I think a lot of works like that. Just junk media in general, I enjoy it. it it's, whether or not it's interesting is largely what you're capable of making of it, and among other things, what's interesting to me is the level of basically historical literacy that's expected of the audience. You can really read that through shit movies like Enemy at the Gates and shit games like this which are ripping off things like Enemy at the Gates. It's just funny how there's like these journal entries before the levels and you can tell that the way they're structured it's just a few keywords have to be in there because it's assumed people won't know what they are like. It's very like bolded in this thing that your guy is like, the Germans are attacking Stalingrad. They are near the Volga River. And it's almost like a kids entertainment educational TV thing. Like it reminds me of like how do I even put this? Wait, now I remember what I have to do. It's like what would be written in like a Russian soldier's diary if I were making like a cheap kids like educational CD-ROM for a school. If that makes sense to you, it's just that level of like basic information, which is kind of what Call of Duty was as well. It's like History Channel gaming, where it's... I think History Channel did actually make games, which I've never been able to find. I'd be interested in what they were. But anyway, it's just that kind of like... I don't know, there probably was a vague sense of like civic duty in the guys making Call of Duty, where they genuinely thought it would be good to, you know, let the kids know what's up with this whole World War II thing, where... It's funny how it's presented, it's almost like that thing Moldbug is always linking, that Hitler Lives video, where it's just like, wow, look at how, like, crass and stupid this is, isn't it insane that everyone believed this in, like, 1940? Yeah, well, check out what video games were saying in 2005, it's like, 
Opening cutscene of... Yeah, we'll have Reds carry that, I think. Opening cutscene of Call of Duty 2, it's just like... It, it's just like, the German Nazi Empire is taking over Europe. First Poland, then Denmark, then Norway, just... Okay, that's World War II, just Germany starts taking over countries, and then America appears in Europe and stops them. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Good to know, that's, uh, the kids are informed now, that was the German em the Nazi Empire, they specifically say that, which I find funny, and oh god no guys, where are you going? Oh no, they're fine. Two of you carry that, or one of you, why not? Oh wait, crap, I'm meant to be getting the reds. <laughs> we'll make it, there's just one piece left, I'm pretty sure if I hurry I can make it. Okay, we have like three pips on the clock left. Have I screwed this up and made myself waste another day? Let's see. <laughs> How incompetent am I? Come on, run faster, you little bastards. Okay, now we're getting attacked by things. We're gonna take those coloreds along and they're just not gonna make it. That's fine. We already lost one. Oh, this clock suddenly feels very fast. <laughs> Come on, guys, we can do it. Maybe I should have even just sacrificed a bunch of red, blues, and yellows to get this thing carried across. <laughs> yep, there they go. See, but these, ye these yellows are doing it, they don't care. But anyway, yes, call of- Oh, they ran across both of them, are you kidding? I didn't need the reds. Come on, trippy man. Run, you little bastards, we're so close. <laughs> okay. Oh, gee, this is exciting, isn't it? Not that I'm under any time pressure, we have 20 days to get the few remaining parts, but... Ah, oh, gee, isn't it going to feel silly if they don't make it because I was so inefficient? Come on, Leafies, we can make it. Don't want to leave any in the ground before we leave this area. Yeah, Call of Duty 2, it's interesting on that level, but also the level on which it's interesting is... Something I've written about before in, like, random comment sections and stuff is... That one video by that face full of eyes guy who is very much a, like... That type who annoys me, the, like, chunky bodega punk second world wizard guy who plays up his stupid accent. Well, really he doesn't. Maybe he just has a stupid accent and I'm just being very mean to him. <laughs> but anyway... He's one of those guys who's like, kind of you'd think he might feel adjacent to and appealing to me. Maybe I'm just a dick and I don't like anybody's opinions but my own, but this guy annoys me, his video on Call of Duty, which is very much just like an essay basically about World War II in which he goes on poetically about horror and violence and how Call of Duty World at War is really a very impressive game because it has such visceral depictions of violence, meaning like they have retarded like Obama era meme animations where like guys get their legs blown off when they get shot. It's very much reflecting back on it. It's not a trend which was developed out of any like desire to do more like meaningful systems of people being torn up by bullets or anything. It was basically a exploitation gimmick. You know what it strikes me as? It's of a kind with a very funny media phenomena of the time, just like, it feels almost downstream of things like the Saw movies, like guys I knew who were into that were into like how hardcore the Xbox games were getting. It's to sell to that kind of like degenerate meathead idiot. They're just like, oh no, this isn't about how like World War II was horrible, they're getting better at expressing that. No, they just want the like Saw audience and they're creating something which feels less spiritually on par with any kind of, like, reflective literary work on World War II, and it's more like Rambo 4, if you remember that movie. I find that movie extremely funny in retrospect. It's another, like, of that rough era of, like, early to mid-Obama, just forgotten. It might even be proto-Obama, like late Bush, 2007. When did Rambo 4 come out? But that is a hilarious movie where there's just buckets of blood, people being like cut in half by machine gun fire, and this vague sense that it's an important movie you should be taking seriously and caring about. Hey, look, we're done with this area, by the way. One second, sorry. 
Yeah, just very, very silly stuff where they were basically cranking up the edge out of some vague sense of, like, pairing on one hand on the vulgar end, there's just this fascination with extreme violence, which is very just dumb and extreme. And then, on the other hand, there's this... So, where was I going? So, I'm... I was talking about ba -ba 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 -bum, Call of Duty, and yes, where this came from was... <laughs> yes, Faceful of Eyes says that he has this very serious hat video about Call of Duty World at War as this more serious look at war. I remember what I was saying now, yes. On one hand, Rambo 4 is a product of... Da -da -da. Yes, go to a different region, he's telling me. It's funny how it's kind of hints there, but you don't need them, and it's just reacting. Hey, it's like the guards in fear. He reacts based on what's going on around him. His diary entries change. I always have to shit talk fear in like every other video. It's just everything Mandalore Gaming says is extremely stupid. I'm not so much mad as just I think he's ridiculous. <laughs> And he makes everything he cares about ridiculous. Like, even a game I like, like Myth, is just funny in my mind because he's said so many dumb things about it. <laughs> okay, 11 ship parts left. We'll go to Distant Spring once I get this thought out, which is... Yes, Rambo 4, extremely silly movie. There was this sense, at the same time, one of the defining elements of Obama media, which I may have mentioned before, is just this... Optimism and pretension, which just gives way to disappointment and things being so lame we don't even remember them. Like, aside from me, no one's probably ever thinking of Rambo 4 ever. I bring it up because I'm weird, I am a messed up child man, so I think a lot about random shit from my youth. <laughs> and Rambo 4 is a movie I remember coming out and just thinking, what the fuck is this? Like, it's Sylvester Stallone looking ridiculous and old in a jungle and people getting blown up and there's this vague sense of, like, no, it's serious. You don't get it? Why are you so fucking dumb, Anthony? Well, yeah, who's dumb now? I'm the one who knew that Rambo 4 is just a comical movie which pairs, like, exploitation violence with vague, unjustified self-seriousness and... Yeah, sorry about taking a long time to get there, but Call of Duty World at War is like the Rambo 4 of Call of Duty games, and it's very funny that Faceful of Eyes basically made a video trying to lionize this as like a serious, reflective kind of literary work, and then you go and actually play it. You can find my comment under his video, by the way. It's a bit old, but I'm still there, and I probably still agree with what I wrote. You play World at War, and it basically fights against its strengths on every level. And that's what interests me about Call of Duty 2. It's basically Call of Duty 5 without the Rambo 4 elements. It's not so fast or visceral in a good way. It's like a series of interactive war diorama movie ripoff scenes, and Call of Duty 2 is slower, heavier, weightier. You can basically appreciate what's going on more. And, like, you're, in you're almost encouraged with how, like, the scene. Every scene basically deadlocks until you push it forward a bit, like the soldiers will just very aggressively fight each other, like it's basically just waves of bots playing out this war scene until you move forward and trigger the next stage of every sequence. Again, it's very much like a theatre type thing where it feels like you're surrounded by actors, but in a good way. Of course you play these games on regular, Call of Duty on high difficulties, difficulties is just obscene. Treating them like a game is dumb, but trying to treat them like a work of art as Faceful of Eyes does is also dumb. And he's basically, yeah, stuck in like high school English brain. Gee, I should just make a video about Call of Duty 2, don't you think at this point? Yeah, hold me to that. If you want to know more, I can answer you in the comments for now, but I'm gonna actually play Pikmin now. <laughs> but yeah, those are the holding thoughts. Face full of eyes is kind of a silly guy who doesn't actually talk about the games he's looking at in a form-fitting way, and yeah, Call of Duty 5 is very silly, Call of Duty 2 is better in a few different ways, but also reflects an inherent silliness in American people and culture, and it's an interesting cultural artifact for many reasons. All of Call of Duty really is, you can track the progression of a lot of trends through those games. Again, Ozymandias sitting in front of all of his TVs. That's me looking at pretty much any piece of media. 
including Pikmin, of course. Let's get back into this. Sorry if you were really hyped to see the distant spring. As always, please, you've got a right arrow key on your keyboard or that little 15 second button on your phone or whatever. Just skip ahead if I'm boring you, that's how you're meant to use YouTube. Peter Greenaway approved media consumption, don't worry. You're not a shitter for doing that. Now look where we are, a beautiful green area full of water. Isn't that a nice change from all the bloody, um... <laughs> all the gloomy rock and sand of that ugly little cave. But oh god, the frogs are back, and that one's like making gangster signs at us. <laughs> we have to clear out this initial area to kind of feel safe, I think, and we're going to need a lot of blues for this area. Which means that if I do this intelligently, we should come up positively for them, or at least we can recycle their bodies and not lose out too bad. Ooh. Get him! Nicely done, team. That's going to regenerate a lot of blues if I lose any. We only lost one on that one. That was pretty good. Get him. I'm actually trying to punch them as Olimar to help get their health down. I realized that last time that um, I was able to actually get their health down quick enough to stop them from getting another jump off in the other area. If I punched, I was having a bit of trouble and losing a lot of Pikmin. Oh yeah, and I mentioned kind of time-dependent appearances of monsters. Look at this egg. That egg will behave differently on different days, and uh, we should keep our eye on that, maybe. But anyway, we'll carry a bunch of stuff back now, and we have 19 days to get 11 parts. There's really, like, no time pressure now, so I could drag this out to a few videos if I just want to shit-talk face full of eyes for half an hour now instead of getting any parts. <laughs> But maybe we can do both. Or maybe I can actually talk about Pikmin, doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> Pikmin is a really funny ge fun game. Hey, let me know in the comments if any of you are actually playing it because of these videos, or if you have played it if it makes you want to. I don't know, I'm just curious, because... You know, I do actually think that this is about sharing things with people, and I don't say that in like a frivolous or meaningless way. I want people to be able to play video games and get more out of them. That's very important to me, that idea, and come on, Blue Pikmin, we can do it. And yeah, if people could play, on one hand, particular games I like and get them the way I get them, that would be nice, but also I'm intending to basically unsystematically share a kind of conceptual toolkit with you which will help you appreciate video games better in general, the way that I think about any particular one, I think, could help you appreciate more. That's kind of my attitude with talking about art, where... I don't know, could I explain things systematically? Maybe, but I also think just, like, a good line of appreciation, like, it shouldn't be, like, reinventing the wheel for every new piece. I think if you just see someone intelligent talk about a few things, you really can just kind of get it and run with it. That doesn't mean, like, oh, every piece of art is saying the same thing, but, like, no, if, you under if you're able to basically be if you're able to basically puzzle out like what makes a thing unique, like just learn how to talk about it like it's its own thing, just understand the idea of doing that and you know, puzzle out how to like appreciate the people behind the work and so on, you can basically get there doing that. And I think yeah, maybe I've done a bit of that. I probably talked about the staff on this game at some point. I told you about, like, the British guy who coded this at some point, I think, and... You know, we've all probably heard the anecdotes about Shigeru Miyamoto. He loved playing in his garden and so on. What a wacky man. <laughs> Let's just look at the Pikmin animate for a second. Look at the way they just distort and the way that they're just hammering it and... This weird, weird rhythmic motion that doesn't really look wrong when you look at like a thousand of them overlapping. It's very clever the way that they're animated. It's all very thoughtfully done so that they won't look wrong while like colliding to hell with each other like as they do because you know I think they very wisely figured that if they if they made the Pikmin collide with each other the game would become a nightmare so they just don't and I think that was a very good idea. Okay the game wants me to use yellows so why don't we use yellows? <laughs> There's a couple of things yellows can do around here, actually. 
And with the rest of these blues, there's actually some more monsters we can go fight somewhere else over there. We've got the massive blue swarm out, so why don't we give them some exercise? There's a part out here somewhere, actually. Uh, which button do I want that one? And Okay, we've got this giant blow thing and these really aggressive tadpole... Oh, no, he's gonna... No, we're good. Now, the hazard with these big blow guys is that they can basically separate your Pikmin while you're being attacked by something else, but on their own they're not dangerous. There we go. Okay, the tadpoles are attacking and they got a few of us, but we've also got the big blow guy. Oh, he was holding the pot, I didn't know that. Well, we've got to clear the way, so let's fight the tadpoles. Oh god. How many did they just get? Okay, they can get two each, that's not a disaster. <laughs> that sounded very violent when they both bit at once. <laughs> For a second I was afraid they have like... Uh, their infinite capacity to eat, and I just fed them like 20. <laughs> okay, that went pretty well. We can grab all of this stuff. This is going pretty good, no? Even if it's not necessarily that hard, you might not have seen me suffer too much. The cave area just makes me anxious. I don't know, it's got like a weird feel to it, if you ask me. <laughs> None of these guys are walking past- oh, they might walk past those, I'd better go clean these up. Of course the guys with the part are gonna... No, come back, oh no, that's a problem. Wait, are they too quick? I have too many flower ones and just too many in general. Look, they're outpacing them. And I missed one of the frogs, I hope he leaves us alone. He's looking at us, and he leaves us be. <laughs> I like that. Now they have... It's like they... In a game like this where everything is very thought out and reactive, but not really on such a mechanical level, it feels more like things are acting naturally. Like, that frog turning to look at us felt more like an exercise of personality than, like, me doing one thing rather than another with specific game mechanics or anything like that. It wasn't AI at work. Now, oh no, this blowing guy next to that giant thing, that could go quite badly. <laughs> As you can imagine, I'm sure. Now, there's a few things to be doing now. There were bombs over the way, and I should go grab them and knock down that wall, and... I need to get rid of the really big monsters sending next to the guys. Olimar telling us we don't necessarily need every part, but I think we can get them all. Okay, let's get this guy away from the... No, away... from the... Come on, you bastard, I've got you. Yep, that's it, this way. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I'm doing too well on this guy. There we... Okay, this is fine. As long as he's not on top of one of the big scary things. There we go. Get him! <laughs> ah, this game is great fun. Yeah, so anything in particular new to say about this area? Probably not, just again, I find it very pretty like the rest of the game and just very tastefully assembled. Like if you look closely you'll see that even... I don't remember if I'm upscaling, but you can see that it's a very kind of low-res ground texture and so on, but very tastefully and intelligently used, I think. This game is just very pretty, built on very simple parts. The ROM for this game is absolutely tiny, like all Nintendo ROMs. That's an interesting detail, I don't think anyone else is interested in how, like, Nintendo games are often the smallest file sizes on their systems, and especially you'll find that the smaller, the er, the really like sm early flagship games err uh, massively on the side of caution with this, where like, later Nintendo 64 games, they'll be, like, really big, like, 60 to 100 megabytes. Mario 64 is, like, what, like, 6 megabytes large? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Pikmin is not a very big game compared to, like, certain, like, PlayStation 2 ROMs, like, God of War is, like, 8 gigabytes. Pikmin is, what, like, probably less than 1 or 1? Just interesting to me how... 
you know, just reserved and intelligent and tastefully, tastefully these things are made. There's one PS2 game that interests me, Vampire Panic, which seems a bit like a weird kind of proto-Dead Rising type thing conceptually. I'd have to explain Dead Rising to explain what that means, just it's something that interests me. That game is a PS2 game and it's something like 60 megabytes large but still looks cool to me. Maybe it was a PS2 port, maybe it was a PlayStation 1 port, like mid-development or something, I don't know how they did that, but that's really cool to me that it's small and still cool. So where did all my Pikmin go? Okay, I left a bunch of blues over there doing a bridge and a bunch got stolen and replanted by a bug you may have seen. That's very funny that there is a... Pikmin getting stuck in the ground was a big idea they had that they grow like carrots and so on and there's only so much opportunity to organically show that off where like they're in the ground once when they appear and then they come out but they found a few fun ways to bring that back where you know if they die in a fight they come back and eh, like that and what's the other thing you know just yeah there's a bug which his only interest in life is to kidnap your Pikmin and make them all good goddamn job Pikmin Swarm. There's a monster whose sole interest in life is to grab your Pikmin and dump them in the ground again like flowers. <laughs> and here's Olimar's massage machine. We'll grab bombs first up to capacity just to knock walls down, then we'll grab your massage machine, Olimar. Woo! That's another fun little Pikmin action. Why do they go woo when they grab bombs? I don't know, but isn't it great? <laughs> It's a fun idea that these creatures, they're just like wired to want to do that to the point they're excited <laughs> just by grabbing bombs. They do it instinctively. Very cool. Okay, bomb Pikmin, let's go hit walls. And if they don't get all the way back, that's fine. We can just grab them tomorrow. Oh, and how many yellows just drowned? Okay, three. Not a disaster. <laughs> I'm not that bad at this game. And I have to remember to grab my blues who I left working on the pit bridge. Okay. Note that the... I feel like the... This game is very pretty with how it does changes of day. You don't really get that in the ground area. I think it's almost a shame that, like, a decent portion of the middle of the game is in that little underground area. Just kind of... Maybe they thought that that was something they could do well. I suppose it does look rather different and interesting compared to the rest of the game, but maybe it plays against the strengths. I think that the way that the whole... Just the time of day change, I think, is a big strength of this game, how, like, the lighting and everything changes a fair bit right now, and it looks quite nice, if you ask me. The game is kind of playing against its strength by, you know, setting a whole level underground. It's... It's almost like this game's sewer level, as far as close as it comes to having one, just a point where it kind of plays against itself for reasons which don't really seem necessary. Very good. Ooh! Okay, we get this guy in, and then we grab, like, those bridge Pikmin, and I suppose we're done. Yeah, I suppose I owe you guys a Call of Duty 2 video next, but I'll call this one after today, and at the rate we're getting them, I could get, like, probably six more in the next two days, and yeah, I could finish this in two more videos of this length, no problem, I think. Yeah, I don't actually think I've left any Pikmin behind so far. That's pretty good for me. Yes, I did do that a few times in my last kind of casual run of this game. Some people... Never do that, but I don't know, I'm just not very good at Pikmin when I'm not very serious, apparently. Back when I was a kid and on the Wii, which is probably a slightly easier version. We'll just leave the ground ones in the ground. Oh man, that bug is around here. How many more did he grab? Potentially a lot. Okay, well that's an easy job for tomorrow. Just extend out another bridge. Knock down a wall. Lots of easy stuff left to do. There's more bombs, and we grab the ones from over the way we already cleared. Nope, he's trying to grab more of the blues. He's not nice. Okay, you know what? He's going into the ground, so he'll be safe. We're not even going to bother getting him back. We'll just pick them next day. And that guy's waking up because it's the end of the day. 
all because he had the Pikmin throne practically on his head. Okay, every Pikmin is hopefully either in the ground or safe. Oh, I reckon one might have gotten stuck under the bridge over there. Well, if so, that's your opportunity to see what happens when one is left behind. We'll see in a few seconds, won't we? Yeah, nothing else to say. I think I'd better restrain myself and call it here rather than start another tangent. Let's just see if all the Pikmin left are in the ground or if uh, one's about to come running. <laughs> Last whistle. This is where. Again, it's quite cool. Any who you leave under onions but not following Olimar will also run out in this point and get in and yeah, any who are unfortunately too far away will see them come running now, if there were any. And... oh, that's it, there's two. <laughs> Good job me, a yellow and a blue. <laughs> I think that's very cool that the game yeah, it just tracks who you actually did leave behind, and you see a little in-engine death for them. <laughs> and yeah, I'm getting this message now because I did that. The ones I didn't bring back to the Onion all vanished. An ugly thought. <laughs> yes, very, very charming detail. Oh, apparently I have left some behind. I probably went through that exact whole explanation last time as well, I just forgot. Oh no, that was all today. I left behind 11? Oh, man. Did the ones in the ground not come back? I don't actually remember how that works in this game now. I suppose we'll see that next video. We know there were 20 out there total, it said, so that means 9 were in the ground and 11 just got left behind. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, so... Well, blues way up, yellows up, reds pretty much didn't see any serious use. Very good then. Save, and I suppose that I'll call it there. I'll start uploading this, and yeah, I hope some of you enjoy it, and we'll be done with Pikmin soon, and that'll just feel good to have a full game done on the channel, won't it? Hopefully that'll push me to do some real stuff that you all enjoy more, but you know, I try to keep writing a bit, recording a bit, and getting at least something done every day, but I really should get more serious, shouldn't I? Anyway, hope you like this. Leave a comment if you want to see any particular thoughts followed up or whatever you want to say. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll call this one here.